there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to draw these roller skates and paint them using some watercolors. It's World Watercolor Month and this was one of the prompts and the prompt was momentum. And they started out in this Arteza sketchbook sketching on the roller skates with a color erase pencil. Now, I looked at a few different pictures of roller skates just to get an idea. I've skated my entire life, uh, so I thought I could pretty much wing this one and I didn't really need a good reference, but uh, boy, I wish I had a good reference because I found it looked very cartoony as I was working on it. And I think it took me longer than it would have if I had a decent reference to go by. But all in all, I had a lot of fun with this and um, I liked the way it turned out, even though I had to rework a bunch of different areas because um, it was just, I could tell something wasn't quite right, but you know, I just couldn't tell exactly what were the proportions, but you know, it's just uh, live and learn. It's like, I always, um, I'm always like, take more time on the drawing, Lindsay, because you, you know, it will pay off in the end. And just having that weird kind of angle to that first skate um, made it a little more challenging to draw, but I thought just two skates flat would be boring. I want to have a little bit of variety there. And I'm just uh, measuring each skate to each other to try to get the right uh, the right size and proportion there. And it still took a few other tries. <laughs> I had to keep on working on that. Now, this little template here is so useful. This is just a circle guide. Um, I think I picked it up at Staples many, many years ago. And the nice thing about this is if I'm doing something in perspective, like those wheels, I and I have uh, you know one skate's a little bit closer to the viewer, I can go the next size down to help draw the wheels on the um, on the other skate. And here I was getting mixed mixed up as well. Um, I did end up having, having to uh, push that wheel forward a little bit more a little bit later. So um, I, it looks fine here, but it's it, it was bothering me later and I realized I needed to nudge it out just a little bit. So, um, so just kind of bear that in mind as you're watching this. And I'm using one of the tiny circles just to do the little um, eyelets for the, uh, for the shoelaces. So yeah working out fine. I love to use the color erase pencils to sketch with because they're not very noticeable underneath your watercolor paint or underneath your alcohol marker, but um, they erase if you absolutely have a bad line that you need to get rid of. For the most part though, I mean, unless it's like a really wrong line and I, or it's on the outside of my image and I think I'm gonna see it afterwards, I don't bother erasing. A lot of times I just leave it as is, but it's kind of like that, you know, Dumbo's magic feather. I have that eraser if I need it. So I did spend a fair amount of time on the sketch here. I wanted to have kind of like a groovy uh, pattern on the skates. Um, I had some rollerblades in junior high and they had this uh, color scheme that's kind of like the late 80s, early 90s um, kind of pastel tones, or not quite pastels, kind of like almost pastel tones. I was kind of debating between that and the rainbow 80s kind of tones, but um, I decided to go with this because I just thought it was a little bit, um, I don't know, is because I, I had skates that kind of looked like them, I guess. And I'm beginning by spattering water on the paper and then I'm gonna spat, spatter in some watercolor. Also, I thought because this um, Gansai Tambi, Tambi, oh my gosh, I always mispronounce that. Gansai Tambi watercolors, I want it to rhyme. I think that's the thing, I feel like it should rhyme, but it doesn't rhyme. Um, because there's such kind of unusual colors in this set, I kind of also wanted to take advantage of that, like that mint green and the lavender and the pink. You know, it just has a really odd, delicate kind of palette, and I thought it'd be fun just to use some of those colors that I typically wouldn't use in watercolor. They're just kind of fun. And with a, with a prompt like Momentum, I thought it was just a great excuse to put in some of those unusual colors that you wouldn't necessarily use in traditional watercolor. And uh, these pastel colors obviously would be a little bit opaque, so um, I wouldn't say as opaque as gouache, but definitely has a lot more body to it than a regular transparent watercolor, which also will give you a little bit more control when you're doing it on dry paper, um, and you can cover up mistakes a little bit, which is handy, but um, yeah, I thought that'd be kind of fun. I wanna put some yellow in here so that I would have like uh, a little bit of a red, yellow, and blue triad going. So I've got the pink for my red. I've got the, which actually that pink does have a, like a really bright red in it. Um, I made it with the bright red and the white because the pink that was in there was more peachy. And then I've got the, uh, the kind of tealy bluish green color. And then I'm going to use like a kind of a turquoisey blue too. And then I've got the yellow. So I do have some nice colors that I can incorporate and mix together if I need to. And that brush that I'm using is, uh, from this set where of, of the Sumi E water brushes, but one of them came broken. The part where the water goes was smashed. And so I'm like, well, I didn't want to send it back. Cause I knew if I sent it back for a return, then it would probably just get thrown in the trash. And 
there's six there were six brushes in the set and they really weren't that much different in size so i'm like you know what i'm just i'm just gonna keep it um the company that i bought it from on amazon refunded the money for like one of the brushes so like a sixth of the purchase price which was fine with me um because they were also similar in size so what i did was i took that um that broken brush and i and i took out the middle part that would hold the water and i took out the little plunger that was in there to push the water and I Gorilla glued the handle to the head of the brush and it made a wonderful shorter kind of travel brush that holds so much water like when you dip it in a bucket um, that I thought, man, it was really nice to paint with, I have to say. So it was kind of like a, um, it was kind of like a happy accident, I guess, that it came broken because I never would have broken a brush to see if I could do that. But it really made a lovely, a lovely juicy brush. And the other thing about this is that it's their faux fur uh, Sumi E brushes and um, they're extremely juicy. They hold a lot of paint and water and they actually come to a really nice point. So they're a little snappier than your regular um, like goat hair Sumi E brush would be, which are kind of floppy. If you, I've only had ones that have come in like kif, uh, kits as gifts, so I'm not like a authority on Sumi E brushes. I'm I'm not a I, I'm not trained in any of that sort of artwork, but I do like a juicy like quill brush. Now here I decided, okay, Lindsay, I gotta stop and dry this because I'm too impatient. I want to paint the colors adjacent to one another, but I don't want to wait for it to dry. And it was kind of um, just humid and uh, things weren't drying, so I did have to get out the uh, the the uh, the heat tool. And you can see I had a brush in my other hand when I was using it because I was so impatient. I just wanted to keep on painting because it was fun. Um, and that's that turquoise color I was telling you about. It's kind of almost like a Prussian-y blue turquoise. And I thought that would just be kind of uh, kind of fun. So now I'm using this lavender. I just thought it was kind of um, a pretty color. Although I didn't use a lavender just as it came in that Gansai uh, palette. This, the Gansai Tambe, Tambi, oh my word. If I ever say that word right, I should win a million dollars. I don't know. Um, <laughs> on the first go, I should say, um, that uh, I've heard that that line of Gansai paints actually doesn't use the animal glue in them. You can double check, but I do believe that those have no animal products in them. So if you are looking for a Gansai paint, because traditionally the Gansai paints have an animal glue, animal glue binder, but I heard the binder in this is dextrose, I believe. Um, but anyway, so if you use it really thick, it has a glossy sheen to it. So I would just kind of warn you not to use it super thick unless you like a glossy sheen on your painting. But anyway, I did mix the lavender that was in the palette with the violet because it was just a little too pale for me for this um, kind of pop art looking piece. And um, the nice thing about mixing the two colors, even though you've got a pastel to begin with, when you mix the two colors, then you have a nice highlight color and then you get a nice shadow color by using it without the lighter tone in it. So just gives you a little variation. So here I've let everything dry and I'm going in with another um, layer just to do some shadows. I'm using my beloved Creative Mark Mimic brushes. They're just um, also a faux fur brush. They are designed to um, mimic the squirrel brushes. So if you like a juicy squirrel brush, but you don't want any squirrels to be harmed for your juicy brush, then you can give those a try. You can find those at Jerry's Artorama and on Amazon. I would just say look both places and, um, and compare prices. Usually Jerry's is cheaper if you're buying other stuff too, um, because the, uh, you know, because it'd be free shipping over like $45 or something like that. I don't remember exactly the number. That's what I think. That's what comes to mind anyway. But, um, you know, I always check both places cause you never know. Um, but I will have, um, I do have an affiliate link to Amazon I can use in the video description. I actually do use those brushes in my signature sets that I have through Jerry's Artorama because I like them so much and I think they're such a nice value and they're such good quality brushes for so much bang for your buck. Now I was considering using some just white watercolor from that set on its own for the highlights, but it looked a little too garish. So I ended up tinting it with a little bit of the color that was um that i had used i think that with these they don't um like if if you put it down and you have got a color color by mistake you can blot it up right away i don't find these to lift quite as much as you would think they would for a um a really pastel some of those pastel tones but the other thing is i'm working on the arteza sketchbook and that's not a good sketchbook for lifting. I happen to really like the sketchbook. It works really well with my method of working. It's um, it's a little bit smoother than a lot of watercolor papers. It's very similar to the Stillman and Burn paper, but I don't know if it's quite as robust, but it's a very affordable sketchbook. And um, for my style of working, this fast watercolor, often with some color pencil on it, it just, it just works really well for me, but it does not lift very well. And I haven't used masking fluid on this paper, but I, I can't imagine the masking fluid would be that um, 
that effective because I think it would tear your paper. It tears with tape pretty easily. So when I tape off an area because I want a border on a painting, because um, I'm doing like a sketchbook scene or something, I have to heat that tape up with my heat tool before I remove it because it will tear the paper. So it's not, it, it doesn't, my, my paint doesn't seem to feather on it, but it's definitely doesn't have as much sizing or as much a strength as some other sketchbooks I've used. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're considering the sketchbook or if you have the sketchbook at home. I know I've, men I've mentioned it many times, so you might have picked it up along the way on my recommendation. I do want to just um, just mention that. So if you do want to use tape to mask off a border that you've got to, you know, use a hairdryer or something, heat it up before you pull that tape off just to give it a little extra um, chance to, uh, to help remove it. I'm just using a little watered down uh, gray mix here to do the ribbing on the tube socks there. I don't know about you, but when I roller skate, I wear a couple pairs of socks because otherwise I will get blisters. <laughs> Not so much well, it was more when I was a kid. I used to work at a roller rink when I was um, in my 20s. And you get used to it and you don't get blisters. At, you become very efficient at roller skating. But when I was a kid, I would come home and I would have a blister on like one of my toes. I can't remember which one it was, but it had to do with what direction you usually skate in. And uh, so I think it was probably, I'm thinking you would skate counterclockwise. And so I'd always have a blister on my big right toe. Um, <laughs> but having, wearing extra socks will help. But then, you know, as a, in my twenties, it got really efficient. So I rarely got blisters and actually I switched to low top skates. So speed skates, um, a little, little information about skates. If you like to skate fast, low tops, I think are the way to go. I don't wear high tops anymore, except for rollerblades. Uh, so here I'm reworking the wheel because I, I the wheel just felt uh, too far apart and maybe it was too far apart on the other one too, but it looked right. It looked all right on the closer one The one in back though just looked weird to me um, Also have the angle a little bit different on the bottom of the foot, but you know what this is a sketchbook This is a this is world watercolor month prompt. I'm not gonna spend hours on these um, These daily paintings. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna jump in there especially when I'm working so much from imagination you know, I gotta cut myself some slack that, you know, my memory is not perfect. I don't think anyone's is, you know, especially if it's not something you see all the time or you've even drawn before. You know, if you've drawn something before, you're gonna remember it better. Like if somebody says, draw a peony flower, I'll, or a rose or something like that, I'll do a pretty decent job at it because I've drawn them before, I've observed them. But if it's, if it's something you've never drawn before and you've never really looked at the object, you know, going from memory can be kind of disastrous because you're not gonna remember all of those little details. But I think I kind of made for it with just like the fun freewheeling aspect of this uh, of this sketch. Now I wasn't quite happy with it at just the watercolor phase so I decided to use some acrylic paint pens. I actually had to go and get these from um, my daughter's bedroom because she loves to use my acrylic paint pens and so they've been up there for a few months and many of the colors hadn't been used so they do tend to dry up even though I keep them flat I made a case for them so they would they would sit flat still they can uh, they can dry up and once those tips dry up they can be a little difficult to revive one thing you can do though is um, you could you could soak the tips in like the tip of it if, if they've dried up like I mean they've dried up and you're gonna need to toss them out or replace the tips um, you could use a little rubbing alcohol that will dissolve the um, the alcohol paint and I want to put a little swirly kind of speed lines from the uh, from the wheels I don't know if I like that or not but hey it's done and it's an acrylic paint there's nothing else I can do about it so you know say lovey <laughs> I, I think it's all right. Um, but anyways, it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this and I hope you give World Watercolor a month or any other daily painting challenge a try because it really does help you level up your skills and it just has you trying different things you probably wouldn't try otherwise. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.